Hello, this is Mick Foley, and you are listening to James and Florence on the Forum. Hi, everyone. This is James Patrick from the Forum Celebrity Podcast, and my partner, Florence Carmel, and I have been putting a lot of stories about the Gabby Petito case since it started, and they've become very popular. A lot of people have asked us to do a YouTube video for those that really can't check out the news as much as they'd like to kind of give an update on what's going on. We weren't really into doing this a lot of people are using this kind of as a fun sleuthy way and to us it's this story really touched us it's very disturbing to have someone's life snuffed out the way it was very very upsetting for us and that's why we're reporting on it but we're gonna do it we'll see how it goes and if you like it and you can continue to view it we'll keep doing it but here goes cassie the interesting thing this week is cassie the sister of brian uh came out a lot of protesters have really been harassing her and her family so she came out and she was very upset and said we'll answer all your questions if you guys just leave us alone you're upsetting our kids our kids are coming home crying and the first thing that happens of course you have that one psycho person that just screaming at her and yelling at her and boy i've never seen so much grandstanding in all my life she doesn't have to come out and answer your questions she's doing that out of, out of you guys leaving her alone because she doesn't have anything to hide people are saying oh my gosh you Her left eye blinked, and that means she's lying. Some of you watch way too much TV. I don't think people are this deep uh, in these situations. She answered all the questions. She said she saw her brother during their family trip in early September. She said that Brian did come home on the 17th and left on the 23rd from Salt uh, to Salt Lake City, and that he came home. He and Gabby had a storage facility that he emptied. He said he wanted to save money so he could continue the trip. He did this with his dad. All the stuff was put into, I guess, Brian's family's house. So that's kind of weird, too. He went back on the 23rd. The last time the mom talked to Gabby was the 25th. And I believe the last time anyone saw her was the 27th. So, oh, just a, a sad situation. It looks as guilty as sin, but no conviction. We got to wait till we get him and everything. But obviously, he is the main person of interest. Another interesting thing that she said is that she's no longer, her parents are no longer talking to her. She's estranged from them right now. She's says that we have no contact. She said she doesn't know what's going on. She said Brian should turn himself in and stop all this insanity. So I I think she was sincere. She didn't seem like she was hiding anything. I think people want to convict the whole family when someone does something wrong. But I, I think she was, she did this to just get people to lay off her. And to the protesters' credit, they said they would. Denny Davis on Saturday more early Saturday morning, a 53-year-old engineer said he was waved down by someone who was lost and seemed kind of confused and dazed on Waterville Road and the Appalachian Trail. It runs the border of North Carolina and Tennessee. He said the person looked a little disheveled, little little out of sorts. So he thought he had recognized Brian. He looked at the photos online and said, yeah, I kind of did. He does seem this way. I'm almost positive it is. He called the Haywood County Sheriff's Department about 2 a.m. They confirmed he did that. They went and sent out uh, two or three deputies to, to check out the situation. They searched some, they checked out some vehicles. They checked out some of the hikers. Nothing was found. Everything's copacetic. Some say, oh boy, that was a lie. And he's a family man, engineer. He has no reason to lie. He's not an attention po. And he, I mean, come on. It, I, I think people are a little bit too cynical sometimes. He was frustrated. He contacted the sheriffs. He called 911. He contacted the FBI a couple times. He said no one was really responding to him. And I don't, he said he didn't know if people knew he had contacted them or even cared about the information so he did the next best thing and what you do you call dog the bounty hunter was obviously been heavy into this case uh dog had his daughter lisa send some photos of brian with a beard and when he got those photos uh mr davis said yes this is for sure him so dog has been looking in florida in some areas a lot of people are saying 
Maybe he went to an island. Maybe Brian went here, the Bahamas, wherever. So Dog's been checking out those areas of Florida, and so we'll see what happens. Another thing that's happened and occurred is that Dog agreed to share information with the FBI, something that he and and the authorities have been at odds with. He said in a press conference, Dr. Bounty Hunter said, uh, if you, you don't share with me, I'm not sharing with you. You don't respect me. I don't respect you. So it's kind of a little bit of a, a tug of war. The FBI and any authority gets a little sensitive when anyone else gets involved. I think mainly because they don't want to s- see if they've done mistakes, to be honest with you, because not all of these disappearances go well with the authorities because there are some detectives that are good that are some that are bad there are some departments that are good and vice versa so not everyone is do, doing a great job and there's a lot of mistakes in some of these searches and i think at the beginning of this there were a lot of mistakes so this is going to be kind of a touchy subject now the appalachian trail i believe is 2200 miles long or so don't quote me on that but it's a very long trail and the appalachian mountains are very rugged you could easily hide in there people can if you remember the uh atlanta bombings with eric rudolph Eric Rudolph hid in the Appalachians for over five years. The FBI was looking for him in a manhunt, and they didn't find him for five years. He was hiding. He lived fairly well. He's very skinny when they found him, but he was still eating well. He would take food from restaurants. He had times when they would get rid of food. If food didn't meet the restaurant quality, he would take the vegetables, the meat, whatever. So he was lit. He said he lived pretty good. Going into the Appalachians, if you're a survivalist like Eric Rudolph, you could easily hide out for a while. I don't know how in-depth. I know he has training and all that stuff. I've done survivalist training years ago, and it takes not only the training, you really got to have a ton of experience. Ryan's not that old. He doesn't seem like he's all that tough. I don't know how long he could last because it's not only the physical part, it's the mental part. The mental part of watching your back, always worrying when you hear someone. There's so many things going on. Animals. I mean, there's just so many things going on in a survivalist situation. So I don't know how long he could hang out or last mentally and physically. So we'll see. Now, Gabby's family created the Gabby Petito Foundation. You could find that at www.gabbypetitofoundation.org. They also have a Twitter page now. Gab's Foundation, G-A-B-B-S Foundation. And it's important if you have any type of tip, any type of thing that you may have seen that's out of the ordinary in regards to this situation, please don't wait. Please call them however small it is. Now, don't just call to call, but call if you have something that's important that you feel that could help the case. Don't wait and follow up on it. There you get so many leads, thousands of leads that it's hard for them sometimes to follow up on everything. So make sure you're persistent. Now, last couple of things we want to talk about in general. I've, I've had friends that are murdered. I've had friends that have been kidnapped, but being put in situations that they were lost, they thankfully came home. But it's important that you guys, when especially young women, if you're out partying, you're out in a club, you're out anywhere, jogging, if you can, hiking, there's strength in numbers. Try not to do things alone. Try to be in groups, especially if you go in clubs. Who you went with, you go home with. Don't go home with strangers. If you didn't go, I mean, a lot of people, oh, he's cute. Look at his car. It doesn't matter. I don't care how sweet people seem. There's a lot of bad stuff coming out. When I was partying and in my younger days, we had a, I never even heard of this stuff. But in today's world, it's so different. And you have to be careful. Shout out to some of the stories I read where bartenders are saving people that are getting drugged. They're seeing, you know, things that are not cool. People trying to take advantage of women. And shout out to all those bartenders that are protecting people and have their eyes out. But make sure that you there's safety in numbers. Try not to go home alone. Try not to do take risks. I know everyone thinks they're street smart and tough, but please don't take chances. We don't want to lose anyone and thousands of people a year missing and thousands are dying and being murdered. And it's so sad. Some even by their, as we're seeing here, boyfriends and ex-husbands. Another thing, if you see a poster online, if you see a post in Twitter, if you see something in Facebook, please share it. 
People are sharing more and more. They're missing relatives or missing friends. Or, and it's important that we share it and get the word out. It's kind of sad that only certain cases titillate the public and we're all into it. But every life counts. Doesn't matter what color they are, what age. There's people in their 40s, 50s, and 60s that get missing and are murdered and are lost or some people may have alzheimer's if they're older but please if you see posts like this share them retweet them make sure that people get the word out because that's the big thing a lot of times the public and social media can greatly help these cases and you're sharing it and you're taking five seconds to even make sure that you get the word out can can save a life it's amazing these stories are not fun for me i've been in the medical field i have seen hundreds of people die i've it's to to <clears throat> To see uh, the demise of people, the demise of a young person is very upsetting to Florence and I, and this is not fun for us. This is not uh, something that is a hobby or a, we're, we're going to figure out what's the conspiracy behind it. I mean, some have Brian now a serial killer up and down the Midwest and, and, the, and the East, and I mean, some of these things get crazy. But it's important that we realize that all of us do count. We have to get back to really caring about one another and watching out for one another. Get involved if you see the wrong thing happening. So let's take care of ourselves. We'll keep doing this as much as you guys kind of want it. And if you guys don't want it, we won't do it. But like I said, check us out on Twitter. We have all our links in the info section. So from Florence and James from the Forum Celebrity Podcast, hope you all have an amazing week. Take care.